tympanometry has been an established part of paediatric practice for many years. However, wideband tympanometry has some specific benefits, namely multi-frequency probe tones. In paediatrics of under four to six months old, the 226 Hz tympanometry probe tone will often produce a false peak. This is due to the flaccid nature of the ear canal. The peak that's seen is actually produced by the flaccid ear canal rather than the middle ear. Therefore, 1 kHz probe tones have been used for many years, and it's well established that the peak seen in a 1 kHz probe tone is due to the middle ear rather than the flaccid ear canal. Working with paediatrics of any age can be a challenge, not least because the patient may be uncooperative. As such, it's important for the clinician to have a number of tools at their disposal to distract or otherwise engage the child. The aim here is to ensure optimum conditions for testing, namely a quiet and calm child. But it's also important for the clinician to decide the priorities for the appointment, be that tympanometry, behavioural thresholds, OAEs or anything else. As you cannot guarantee the child will cooperate throughout the entire appointment, it is recommended that the clinician prioritises testing, but also adapts throughout the appointment. As such, any approaches that can help save time are desirable. The following videos demonstrate how to use wideband tympanometry to support this approach. Our first example is Isla, a five-month-old, very happy girl, who first of all was very calm and settled when we took the first recording. As such, we got a good seal, and the first recording was made very quickly. You can see all of the colours of the absorbance pattern, as we would expect to see, and a smooth trace as well. So we decided to get the <laughs> other side. Shall we do the other one? This time Isla was a little bit more excited, she was a bit more interested in what I was doing. So her mother got a rattle toy and shook it, which distracted Isla, and it meant that I could get on with taking the measurement. Initially I had a seal, but unfortunately as you see on this recording it actually begins to leak and we have characteristic very sharp peaks. So we repeated the measurement and as you can see the absorbance pattern here is different. So I wasn't sure if this was a measurement error, so I repeated that and we got the same kind of pattern again, so I took that as the true measurement. So by watching the two absorbance patterns grow, I was able to see a difference between them, which is a potential indicator of measurement error, especially if you have no suspicion that one side is functioning differently to the other. This way I was able to take a repeat measurement straight away while Isla was calm and settled, and it meant that I would avoid any other issues further down the line or any other waste of time in the appointment. Next we have Jake, who is Isla's twin brother. Jake, however, was far less settled. And it turned out that he actually hadn't gone down for his nap earlier in the day. You can see he's very interested in me, my hands, and especially the probe in his ear as well. He constantly turns towards it, not only hearing the probe tone, but also just the feel of it in his ear. We tried distracting him with the rattle toy, just as we did with Isla earlier. But he really didn't find it as interesting or as engaging as I was, or rather as interesting or as engaging as the probe was. As such, we couldn't get him to stay still with the probe in his ear at all. And you can see visibly he's getting a bit more frustrated, quite red in the face. Even when we attempted to go to the different ear, he would still for a moment when the probe first went in his ear, and then he would turn towards it, dislodging the probe and making it impossible to get a consistent measurement. Come on. 
He was really starting to get upset at this point. And so his father actually took him in his arms. As we hoped this would settle him more. Unfortunately, Jake didn't settle at all throughout the measurement. And try as hard as we might, we weren't able to get a consistent or a good seal and take the measurement. Those of you that are eagle-eyed might notice that on Jake's father's watch, it's actually half past seven in the evening at this point. Jake was very much ready to go to bed and was not interested in the tympanometry measurement at all. Finally, we can see a slightly older child. This is Hudson. He's here with his mother and sister. Now, Hudson was quite dubious about me throughout the build-up to this appointment. So we did decide to start off by teaching uh, Hudson's mother to brace uh, in anticipation of him being upset. You can see he was very upset throughout. Um, but as he started to find comfort with his mother, then we were able to get him just settled enough to be able to take a measurement. We did have to repeat the measurement initially. And as you can see, it is quite noisy. There are lots of peaks. Now, the averaging process was able to actually smooth a lot of these out to remove it from the recording. This isn't ideal. Um, and in the ideal situation, you would actually repeat when he is much more settled. If this, is, if this is the only results that we can get, then it's certainly better than nothing.